Puzzle Strike is a tabletop card game played with chips instead of cards, which simulates a puzzle game which simulated a fighting game. And did I mention we're playing the browser-based version? It's all coming up right here on Puzzle Strike Explained. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is the Puzzle Strike interface. You can see my opponent's character represented on the blue area here. My character is represented on the red area here. And we start the game with 10 chips in our draw pile, or our bag, in the case of the physical game. And those 10 chips are six of these one gems, one, two, three, four, five, six, one crash gem, and three of these character chips. Each character has three different chips that give them a unique theme, a unique feel to how the deck will play. Uh, so this character in particular is about trying to get a lot of money built up over the course of the game. Uh, this in particular allows him to upgrade the money in his hand into better money over the course of the game, every time he gets to play it. Um, it's also a defensive character having the ability to block enemy gem attacks. So let's talk about that real quick. Right here is the gem pile. I have one in my gem pile. My height equals one. My opponent has zero because they haven't had a turn yet. At the beginning of each turn, you must ante a gem from the bank into your pile. And that's done automatically for you in the online version. That represents in like a Tetris or a puzzle fighter game, you have those gems falling from the sky or the little puzzle Tetris pieces falling from the sky and you constantly have to deal with getting rid of them. In this game, like in Puzzle Fighter, when you get rid of them, most of the time they go to your opponent, making it their problem now to deal with. And the goal of the game is to uh, make sure your opponent is the one that loses first. And you lose by having a pile height of 10 or more at the end of your turn. So if you have a pile height of 12, but during your turn you manage to get that down to 9, you're still in the game. If you have a pile height of 10 or more, at the end, you lose. So, let's actually play the game. Anti, action, buy, cleanup. A, A, B, C. That's how you keep track of the turn order here. We've already done the anti phase, it's done automatically for us. So now we're on the action phase. Action chips have these banners. This is a purple action. Here's another purple action, and here's a brown action. The other colors are blue and red, and we'll talk about the differences to those in a bit. For now, as I said, we don't want gems in our pile. We want gems in our opponent's pile. So let's take this crash gem. Anything with this purple orb manipulates gems in your pile. That's what this, uh, on, on the left-hand side here, that's what that represents. So let's take and, and use this crash gem. What that does is I choose a single gem from my pile, crash it, break it apart into its component pieces, and send it to my opponent. Now, my opponent had no way to stop me in this particular turn, but there are many defenses that you can use against somebody doing that to you. All of those defenses have a purple shield, like this one does on the right-hand side of its banner. So if you have a purple shield in your hand, sometimes you can use it to defend yourself from somebody crashing at you. Now, we've done with the action, because I had one action, I spent it, it's now my turn to buy. So I've got three dollars to buy with. I have one dollar here, one here, and one here. But where did this come from? Well, let's look at my, my, my crash gem that has been discarded. Uh, that has a plus one dollar at the bottom. It's called gem power in the, in the uh, parlance of the game. Uh, so I've got a bonus gem power for this turn only because I used a action that gave it to me. So I've got a total of three. So I could, if I wanted to, buy three of these really annoyings. Um, or I could buy a training day and a really annoying. Or I could buy just one, draw three. Or I could just buy a single really annoying. You don't have to spend all of your gem power, but you do have to buy something. If you ever can't buy something, you have to buy a wound, which is bad, and you'll learn why as we go. So, at this point though, I've got three. Early in the game, uh, it's not a bad strategy to go ahead and pick up some extra money. This will make it easier to buy high uh, cost items in the future because some of the things like, for example, the one of each, this is a really nice chip, but it costs five. We don't have the ability to buy that. This is a really nice chip, but it costs nine. We don't have the ability to buy that either. So, let's actually just use our three to buy this two. And now what happens is, even this stuff from my hand that I didn't use goes into the discard pile along with everything else that I did use and the newly purchased chips. So I hit end my buy phase, 
It's now my opponent's turn. I've drawn my fresh hand of chips. I will explain what's going on here in a moment. Okay. My opponent just purchased some, a chip after using an action. Now it's back to my turn. So as I mentioned, all the stuff that I used, the stuff I didn't use, and the stuff that I bought went into my discard pile. And then I drew a fresh hand from my bag. Right now, though, my bag is empty, which means the next time I go to draw from it, my discard pile is going to be shuffled up, and I'm going to draw from the bag, which means now I have the possibility of drawing that two that I purchased in the previous turn. So this happens over and over again throughout the game. Stuff you buy goes in your discard pile, discard pile becomes the bag, and then you draw from it and get it into your hand. So that's how this game functions. It's just a cycle over and over again. But the challenge is, how do you construct your deck to deal with A, your character chips, B, your opponent's character chips, and C, the bank? Because these 10 chips, which are known as puzzle chips, they've got a little puzzle piece there, these 10 chips are changeable. There are 24 in the base set, 24 in the expansion, which means you have a total of 48 possible chips to choose from, which means if you randomly choose a bank or you choose a bank you know, that you want to set ahead of time, you can have a very different experience based on having some chips available and some not available. So let's go ahead and keep playing. Now, I've only got one action this turn, so I might as well play it. And you can see down at the bottom here, it's uh, got a black arrow saying I've got one action. Black arrows mean one action of any type. Doesn't matter what color it is. So I'll play Stone Wall. Now, what is Stone Wall here? It says plus circle and plus piggy bank. Okay, well, plus circle is draw. And as you can see, I just drew a chip. And plus piggy bank means I can save one chip from this turn into my next turn. Now, why is that useful? Because I just drew big rocks, but I can't use it because I don't have any actions left. But now I can potentially save it to use it next turn. All right, but we are now into my buy phase, and I must now spend $4. Uh, well, there's a lot you can get for $4. Uh, we've got Dashing Strike. This is an attack I could use on my opponent. Um, what else could I get? I can't get a three. That would be too, that's too expensive. I could buy a combine. I think that might be a good thing to do even this early in the game. Combines are very, very important, and you'll see why as we continue to play. So there we go. I purchased a combine. I end my buy phase. Now I have my piggy bank. Which chip do I want to keep? I'll say, hmm, I think I want to keep this chip. And I say, I'm done. Now I'm drawing up to five. I didn't get a bonus draw. There, I simply drew back up to five. So instead of drawing five, I drew four because I kept one. Hope that makes sense. Okay, right now I seem to be doing really well. My opponent's at pile height five. I'm at pile height two. So things are going well for me. In addition, I got exactly the chip that I wanted to get out of my draw. Now, we mentioned before, I've got one action a turn. I can only play one chip. Now, let's see what happens when I play Strength of Earth. Those of you paying attention at home, We'll probably have figured out that this plus brown arrow means that I get an extra brown action instead of a black action. That means I can play anything with a brown banner like Big Rocks. So uh, uh, let's take another quick look here. What else does this do, this Strength of Earth? It combines a one from the bank with a gem in my gem pile. So right here we've got, now I've added to my gem height. I started this turn with two, now I have three. That can't be a good thing, right? Well. It can be, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, but for now, I've got a two gem and a one gem in my pile, which totals up to three. I'm going to get big rocks and turn a one into a two. I could have turned this two into a three, but I think I'm going to turn a one into a two for now. It kind of spreads out and makes that more of my turns will be big money turns rather than just one really big turn and you know a few smaller turns. So now I've got a total of five, which is really good. I'm going to buy one of each because this is a great teaching uh, thing. Right now, it gives a free black action after you use it. So it's essentially like you didn't play a chip at all because you keep the action. It also gives you a piggy bank. It gives you a dollar for buying this turn or one gem power. And it gives you a draw. This is great. You could just chain these over and over again and you just get more stuff drawn into your hand. It's almost like it doesn't even take up a space in your hand. It's very useful. So we're going to end our buy phase having purchased that. And here we go. Let's see what my opponent does. Now has six gem pile height. Uh-oh. She's crashed a gem at me with her crash gem. 
You can see it floating here. It's in limbo. It's on its way over to me, waiting for me to react. Because if I have any chip with a purple shield on it, I can use that to react. This one, where Reflect Gem sent uh, to me, it'll send those chips to the bank instead. So instead of this chip going to me and making my life more difficult, it'll instead go to the bank. But I could also use a Crash Gem to react. And I could crash something in my pile. And then the two gems will meet in the middle. And let's watch what happens. I could crash a two gem or a one gem. If I crash a one gem, they cancel each other and both go to the bank and nothing else happens. But if I crash with my two gem, it breaks apart into two one gems, blocks one of them, and the other one goes to my opponent who then gets the option to respond herself. She responds by crashing two one gems sending it back to me, I can now use stone wall to block that last one from going to me. And wow, that was a really powerful turn for her. She just purchased a four gem straight up. Wow. Now, how exactly did she do that? Let's take a look at her character chip. Unstable power as a main action, meaning on your turn, or a reaction, meaning when somebody's crashing it at crashing at you, you can play this as if it were a double crash gem, then gain two wounds. So this, she starts with a double crash gem in her deck at the very beginning of the of the game. This is one of the most powerful and important chips in the entire game, but hers comes at a price. She has to gain two wounds when she does that. Now imagine a hand that I pulled and it has a bunch of chips in it. Now take away two chips and replace them with wounds. That hand just got worse. Wounds clog up your deck. They make it harder to get to the things that you want to get to. So you don't want wounds. But Jaina actually has a way of dealing with that. And it's in her hand right now. So we'll see if that happens on the next turn. Meanwhile, I've only got four chips now. Because I had to spend chips on my pre I had to actually use them outside of my turn in order to uh and then when they get used they go to the discard pile so I don't get any replacements you only draw once at the end of your own turn any chip you spend on your opponent's turn you don't get a replacement for those so I've only got four I can play one of each though and I will get an extra action I'll get an extra draw I'll get a pig and I'll get a dollar so now I could spend big rocks because I still had the extra action, I could turn this one into a two. There we go. And now I've got a total of $5 again, and I'm going to use it to buy another one of each. This is a really cool system that you just, you know, I just want to get lots of one of eaches and cycle through my deck really quickly. That's one strategy. Okay, my opponent's going to play a combine, which takes two one gems, turns it into a two gem. She played with fire in order to get some extra actions. There it is, Burning Vigor. And I'm not going to be able to show you exactly what it does, but I can tell you... There it is, actually. Burning Vigor. Trash a wound from your hand or discard pile. If you do, plus one wild action and anti a one into each opposing gem pile. This is an attack. And I see that the fists are a little screwed up there. They're supposed to just be solid red, but something's going weird with exploit. Um, so attacks can only be reacted against by blue shields. See this? This is an attack and a blue shield. You can attack with this and you can respond with this against other attacks. So r blue responds to red, purple responds to purple in terms of uh, the sh what the shields do. So I didn't have any blue, so I couldn't respond to her attack. I just had to take the ante that she gave me. She forced me to ante one into my pile. So where are we here? I'm at combine, but notice the combine has a minus one dollar. It's one of the most important things you can do, but it comes at a price. So it also has a plus one action on it. So you almost always want to use the combine because you get the action right back. And it means that the next time I crash something at my opponent, it's a much more powerful crash. It's sending more gems to them with a single crash than you would if you didn't have big gems in your pile. Now I could play Strength of Earth and look what happens. I get to combine a one gem from the bank with a two gem in my gem pile, meaning I now have a three gem in my gem pile. Excellent. That is going to be a really potent attack the next time I get to crash at my opponent. In addition, I get a brown arrow, but I got no other actions to play, so I have to end my action phase. I now have four dollars to spend. I could buy another combine, but to be honest, I don't know about that. That's, uh, I've already got one combine, and it's weakening my money situation right now. I'm just going to buy a two, 
and then the next time I'll be able to afford a combine uh, and I'll probably have enough money in my hand to keep buying big stuff. Ideally, I want to get enough money in my hand to really buy a double crash gem so I can use that as the end game, like drop the hammer on them. All right, I'm going to end my buy phase, even though I didn't use all my money. That's fine. I've got a pig. I could keep... No, I didn't get a pig this turn. Sorry, that's one of each from last turn. Uh, I was thinking about... Okay, there's the crash gem. She's crashing at me. But what is she going to crash? She's going to crash a little one. She's not going to crash the two. And the reason for that, we'll show you in just a moment. I am going to react by crashing a one of my own. I don't want to crash the three, and I will show you why. Sometimes it's better to just crash a one instead of your gem, big gem, and uh, we'll see why soon. Now we both have a three in our pile. Oh, never mind. She bought a combine. She didn't use a combine. My bad. So now I've got pile height five. She's got pile height five. We both have a... Uh, she's got a two. I've got a three. So arguably, I'm in a slightly better position. But again, it all depends on what's in your hand. Uh, so let's see. I'm going to play one of each because that's all I've got. And I happen to draw a two, which is great. So now I have a total of two, three, four, five, six, seven dollars where I will buy a four. Big money. This is going to make it much easier for me to afford that double crash gem with this in my deck. Here we go. She's playing a combine, putting those together. Now she's playing a really annoying. She put a wound into my bag with that. That's what that does. If she plays as a main action, each opponent gains a wound. So now I have a wound in my bag. Gain, by the way, is a key word in this game. When some chip says you gain something, it means take it from the bank, put it in your discard pile. That's what gain means. So let's check this out. I'm going to play combine. Excuse me. Going to combine the three with a one. Boom. And now you can see that's glowing a little bit. It's a little bit glowing because four gems are special. Four gems are uncounterable. She cannot play any purple shields in reaction to me sending a four at her. So this is like you build it up, you build it up, you build it up, and then you unleash. Like, like, like uh, Dragon Ball Z. I hated to make that comparison, but it had to be made. So uh, so now the next time I crash, she can't respond. She has to take all four. She cannot respond and defend herself with, cr with counter crashes. So now that I've done that, I've still got another action here. I could play Strength of Earth. Again, that's a nice chain that will allow me to uh, combine there. I've made my pile head a little bigger. That's not great, but uh, you know I'm pushing the limits here. I'm at 7. I don't want to get above 10. But uh, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to get to a Crash Gem fairly soon. So I'm okay, I hope. I might buy a Crash Gem this turn if I can afford it. I'm going to use Big Rocks to turn a 2 into a 3 in my hand. And now, oh, I can't afford a crash gem. Crash gems cost five. I only have a four. That's going to pose an issue. So at this juncture, I think I might not be in a bad situation to buy a self-improvement. What this does is I can use it, like I said, to defend myself from somebody attacking me with an attack, whether it's a knockdown or a really annoying or Jaina's, uh, you know, a special character chip that acts as an attack. This will let me respawn and it'll let me draw three so that my next turn after I've been hit with an attack is really powerful. Lots of good either money for a big buy or combos uh, if I get a lot of good chips. So let's see. I now have the four. So yeah, I'm going to buy a self-improvement because it'll also let me, if I use it on my turn, get rid of a chip from my hand or discard pile. I could get rid of that wound that I don't like. So this is a good chip to have. Um, in addition... I don't get to keep my stone wall. That's disappointing. I didn't have a piggy bank that turn. All right, she's using unstable power. That's very bad. Oh, boy. This could be very bad. I don't have the ability to react, it looks like. Um, so I have to just sit here and take it all. I'm at 11. If I can't get rid of those 11, I lose. She bought a 5. I've got one chance. I took a risk the other time. I've got one chance. If I can pull this crash gem, I can win. Or at least get myself back in the game. Now, I've only got one way to draw chips from this entire hand, and that's this here. I've got one chance. Here it goes. Oh, no. I could combine. Sure, combine. What is it going to do? I can't crash. I can't clear out my gem pile. It looks as though I've lost. I'll do everything I can possibly do. She didn't attack me, so I couldn't use this to draw cards. Um, 
and and I guess I'll just make my, my situation worse because there's nothing I can do to fix it. I can do all of this, but none of it matters. I've lost the game. So now, KO! There it is. Puzzlebot wins. <laughs> now, uh, let's do a rematch uh, with a new character. I'm going to show you a character that focuses a little bit more on a different kind of strategy. Uh, like I said, here's all the different base characters, the 10 base characters. Here's all the 10 expansion characters. And as you can see, they all have their own uh, sort of set of chips, right? Um, this one is got a, an attack, a defense, and a brown arrow. This one's got three browns. Uh, they all have their own theme. She's a sort of combo-y character. That's why she gets a lot of extra arrows, because she likes to combo. This character is very defensive. That's why he's got the stone wall and the slow buildup of money. Uh, this character has turned into a dragon, and then he attacks you in dragon form. Uh, this guy has a sort of martial mastery, lets him upgrade his chips all the time. It allows him to constantly make his deck better and better. So a lot of cool things going on in here, but I'm going to go with DeGray. Uh, he's an offensive style character that does a very interesting thing. There we go. So... Now I've got a new character. Let's take a look at his, uh, his chips here after a second. She purchased a really annoying. She wants me to gain wounds, it looks like. Now, no more lies. Trash up to two, two chips from your hand. For this game, I'm going to start explaining some of the more uh, important vocabulary to this game. And we'll go into some more advanced strategies. No more lies is a chip that's specifically about deck thinning. So deck thinning in this game is about trying to take a deck of 15 chips, get rid of like the three or four or five chips that you don't want because they're weaker than everything else, and instead make the deck only be composed of things that are really good for you. Like if you could get rid of everything from your deck except all of the purple hips chips and you could crash and double crash like every single turn and combine four times before you did it, that would be an amazing deck if you could just play the really good ones. If you could get rid of all the ones from your deck and instead replace them with twos, you'd have much better buying power. So deck thinning is about getting rid of the bad chips, or not the bad chips, but the less good chips from your hand. Sometimes that means getting rid of wounds that your opponent gives you. Sometimes it just means getting rid of the ones or the chips that you don't need anymore so that you can draw those purples more often or you can draw your combos more often. So no more lies is a very, very important chip. And his deck is er, his, his, his most important chip, I think, because it's, it's very unique. Pile bunker is an attack that focuses on denying the enemy a big money strategy. An enemy who tries to buy a lot of uh, chips in the uh, you know two, three, or four size is going to have them completely replaced and wiped out of their hand and instead replaced with ones. So trying to get a lot of money when I have Pile Bunker is a problem. So uh, although it, Pile Bunker is a really powerful chip, right? I can see what their hand is. I get a draw. I get a piggy bank. And I get to force them to lose, to lose some of their best money chips. What's the downside? This is what is called an ender. When I play this, I lose the action that I use to play it. Unlike the chips like this one that have an action printed on them. I can play this action and then get an action to replace it. This is an ender. When I play this, I'm done. So in order to play more than one ender on your turn, you need something called a fork. One two punch is a perfect example of a fork. You play this, it costs one action, it gives you two actions. Which means now you can chain two separate sets of actions together and have two enders. And enders, by their very definition of being an ender, are more powerful than chips that give you actions. Um, you know, the, the one of each is a great, you know, it, it just it gives you an action. You can chain a bunch of them in a row, but it's not super powerful. It gives you a money and a pig and a draw every time you use it. But it's not super powerful. Uh, things like um, Training Day and Draw 3. Draw 3 is an amazingly powerful chip, especially if you could chain more than one of them together and if you have actions left over so that after you draw, you still can do things. So if I were to buy a bunch of Draw 3s and a bunch of 1-2 punches and a bunch of other Ender chips like Really Annoyings, maybe I could create a deck that would allow me to do uh, to draw most of my draw pile into my hand and then play everything. That's a viable strategy. It's not necessarily always the best strategy. Opponents can counter it, but it's a strategy. So that's some of the things that you have to think about when you're playing the game. 
Troublesome Rhetoric is DeGray's last chip, and this one forces your opponent to choose what he's going to give you, either $2 and a pig or make this a cantrip. And a cantrip means plus one action, plus one draw. Anything with plus one action, plus one draw is called a cantrip. What that means is playing this gives you a draw, and then you still have an action left to play that draw. Whereas this doesn't give you an action to play it, but at least it gives you a pig to save the thing. Because if I'm hoping, you know, I really need that crash gem, if I draw it next turn, I need it. But if I were to play Pile Bunker and I drew my crash gem this turn, and I didn't have a pig, for example, I would lose access to it. It would go to the discard pile. I'd lose it forever. When, you're, when your deck gets to be 14, 15, 16 chips big, maybe even 20 chips big, if you say goodbye to that crash gem without spending it, it could be three to four to five turns before you see it again. That's a problem. So cantrips mean I get to draw and then immediately play something that could be of high, high importance. So let's go, let's go take a look here. Troublesome Rhetoric, always a good one to start out with. I don't have anything I want to, I don't want to get rid of these ones yet. I don't have anything to replace them and I need to buy this turn. I can hope that he's going to give me the plus two money. He did. He didn't want me to draw. It's a stupid bot. It doesn't know any better. Uh, so that allows me to buy something that costs four. How about a one-two punch? We were talking about how good that is. I'll show you how good that is. Now I get a pig. I'm going to keep Pile Bunker. Although Pile Bunker is kind of useless if the opponent doesn't have any money. Ooh, he just purchased a really big money. So that would be uh, very good for me to hit him with next turn, because I know he doesn't have it. It's sitting here in a discard pile. I can, you can always see your discard pile. You can always see your opponent's discard pile. You can also look into your own bag. Uh, so let's see now. Hmm. I have Pile Bunker. I didn't draw my Crash Gem because I pigged last turn. That might not necessarily have been the best plan. But let's do this again. I will... Oh, it's plus one chip or plus one pig. Hmm. Pig isn't useful. But neither is chip because if I play a chip, I know I'm going to draw that Crash and not be able to play it. That's exactly the situation that I don't want to be in. So instead, I'll choose pig. Just... Oh, he's using really annoying to block me and to give me a wound. What a jerk. But I at least get to look at his hand. I know he's got unstable power. He's got three character chips and a crash gem. That's not a great setup for him. He's only going to be able to really choose one of those. Yeah, he's not going to be able to, uh, to play all of that. That's a crappy hand for him because look at that. It's four enders. Actually, playing with fire isn't an ender. He could play playing with fire, then burning vigor... But Burning Vigor won't do anything, so he can't get the plus action from it because he can't trash a wound from his hand or discard pal because he doesn't have one yet. So Crash Gem's probably going to be his best bet. But I've got a four. Anyway, what do I want to buy with four? Um, I'm going to buy a two because if I start buying twos, eh, look at that. I could save that one. Sure, I'll, I'll save my one so I have a little bit buy power next turn. Oh no, look at that. I've got a wound. Don't like that. Don't like that at all. He's crashing at me. I've got two enders here, so I might as well use one of them on his turn. Defend myself so that uh, I can uh, use this thing next turn. Okay. Now, I've got a wound, which is worthless to me. I've got a pile bunker, which is an ender. And... If she has that three in her hand, it'll ruin her day. So let's build it. Let's play it. Now, what do I have in my bag? I could wind up drawing any of these things. If I draw money, though, it'll be really helpful because two, you can't do much with two money. So let's take a chance and draw a chip. We got lucky. We got the money I was hoping for. If we'd gotten a, 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 an action, it would have been bad. Oh, did she just play a really annoying against me and give me another wound? She definitely did. That is uncool. But instead, I'll draw, I'll draw and buy a two, and buy face. Oh, I still haven't gotten my no more lies. I need it to get rid of the wounds from my hand, from my discard pile. That's going to be disappointing. She just bought another really annoying, or played another really annoying. She played another really annoying. I just got another wound. Good thing my character is one of the only ones that actually has a way of dealing with that. All right, let's see here. There's one very important rule I did not yet mention. By the way, one two punch is not very useful right now. Um, oh, no more lies is exactly the one I would have hoped for. Now I can trash two wounds. Oh, two chips from my hand. Dang it. I can't tra uh, 
trash from my discard pile. I guess that would be a little overpowered. Well, let's play this anyway, and I'm going to trash a one from my hand, because like I said, I'd rather draw twos, and I've bought two twos already. And I'm going to end my action phase. I could play this, but look, it does... It, 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 actually, I can't play it, because I, I only have a red arrow. But it does. it's not going to be useful for me. It's unfortunate that... Uh, let's see here. Hmm. So I have three dollars. I'm going to do a draw three. That's going to help me... Uh, if I can get the draw three and the one-two punch. Perfect. That's exactly what I'd hoped for. Uh, I don't have the option to react, so I'm going to not react. Now notice, this is something I forgot to mention in the first game. We've got three, six chips that we drew this turn. Why did we draw six instead of five? See the three nubs here? One, two, three. Every time your gem pile passes one of those nubs, you start to draw an extra chip every turn. So when you have at least three, four, or five chips in your pile, pile height of five, I should say, um, you draw six chips instead of five. Once you get to seven, eight, uh, uh, six, seven, or eight, then you draw seven chips at the end of your turn. Once you're at nine, at the end of your turn, if you're right on the edge of losing, you draw eight chips, and you have a high potential to either buy a really good chip or get a lot of combos going if you can chain things together. So, my turn. One, two, punch. There's the fork. I've now got two actions. I can spend one of them on draw three and the other one on no more lies to get rid of this. Uh, yep, gonna tr trash the wound, get it out of here, and then use pile bunker! For a plus chip. Oh, it's a wound. That's too bad. He blocks it with really annoying to give me another wound. Um, the good news is they, uh, she did, she trashed her three gem and gained a one gem. So my pile bunker destroyed her biggest money that was in her hand and put a one gem in her discard pile. So she would have had a seven buy last turn, but pile bunker turned it into a four. Good job, pile bunker. Now I've got six. Uh, this could be useful to buy a self-improvement against her, but, um... I could also try attacking her, too. Get, like, a dashing strike. Trash a one from my gem pile, and my opponent anties a one. Sneak attack is just a straight-up... You could chain those together. Look at that. You could just buy a bunch of sneak attacks and chain them together. That wouldn't be terrible, actually. Um, I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking about doing that right now. Buy two of them. And hope that we get them. I finally got my crash gem. I have to use it this turn. Which means using Troublesome Rhetoric would be a real danger at this point. Now I'm going to use Crash Gem. She's going to counter with one of her own. Both of them go to the discard pile. Now I've got a total of $4 because I used that Crash. I'm going to use a Combine. got to have a Combine. Uh, I have been neglecting the Combines. And as you can see, crashing one at a time is very inefficient. If your opponent starts crashing twos and threes at you... No, you gotta be, you're going to be in trouble is what it is. Ooh, I got a good combo here. Let's see what we can do. She discards a chip and can't play crash reactions on this turn. Well, I'll discard this wound because it's useless to me. Uh, oh, no. She's going to crash three at me. Ouch. Those two plus another one. Ugh. Now I'm at eight. It's not fantastic. Not going super well with DeGray either. But if I can get this, could be a really good turn. Let's find out what happens. I'm at nine. Okay, I'm going to play the 1-2 punch to give me uh, a fork there with two sets. Now I can play, draw three, get a lot of options here. Oh, yes! Sneak attack! Sneak attack! And pile bunker! I, I don't know what, um, I think I'm going to pig. Because if I chip, I could accidentally pull my crash gem, and that would be really, really bad. So I'm just going to choose pig, even though I'm probably not going to use it. At least that time, she did not have a, uh, a, a really annoying to shove in my face. So I've got three dollars. Ugh. I'm gonna buy a two. I, I need to buy more. Three is not enough. I need more combines and crash gems, because my deck is getting big and I can't do anything about it. Where is no more lies? There it is. That'll let me get rid of the wound, and I'll probably trash a one along with it. She used gem essence, which is a big fork. Gives her one of every color. But she has to trash a gem from her hand to do it. She did that. And she didn't wind up doing anything. That was actually a bad bot move. It was useless. <laughs> the bot is kind of doing things randomly. Um, no more lies. I want to play it, but I can't. Look at this. If I play it, 
I'm going to only get a red action, and I have no red banners. Meanwhile, I need to crash this turn or I lose. So even though I really wanted to use No More Lies, instead I'm going to combine and then crash this two from my hand. Because if she doesn't have a crash or a double crash in her hand, I win the game. Let's do this. Crash this two. Hey, look at that. I got ten free tokens. That's uh, the monetary system in the game. She didn't react. I don't think she has any... Oh, this could be a winner. This could be a winner. She's got nine. She's going to half the ante one next turn. I've got four. I'm buying a combine just in case. I really wish I could have thinned my deck out a little bit that turn, but I had to crash in order to keep it up. She's going to combine. Uh-oh. Does she have the crash? Does she have the crash? No, she's only got a knockdown. Maybe she does still have a crash. She could still play it. She's got a purple arrow. She didn't have it. She's knocked out. I win the game. Oh, yeah. Whew. All right, victory, victory, very nice. So, that is Puzzle Strike. I hope that I sort of discussed the very important things. One, don't buy a lot of enders. As I mentioned, uh, if you have something that just doesn't have any more actions on it, that's called an ender. If your hand is filled with enders, you'll get in a situation like I was a couple of those turns where I had actions I could not perform because I did not have any forks. So if you buy too many enders and you get them all in a bit in one hand, that's very bad. You don't want to have too many enders. You also don't want to avoid buying money. If you never buy any money for your deck, then those six one gems that you get will get spread further and further out through your hands. As your deck gets to 15 or 16 or 17 big, then as you cycle through it, you're only going to get a couple of ones sometimes, and then you're going to have to buy something. Sometimes you might have to buy a wound. So you'll have to buy money to keep a certain percentage of your deck money. So you need to keep, so you need to balance money with everything else. You also need to buy combines. So don't buy too many enders unless you also buy a lot of forks or you have some inherent forks with your character. Make sure you buy some money. Make sure you buy combines, and when your deck starts to get too big, make sure you also buy extra, an extra, or maybe an extra two crash gems. If you can afford it, always get that, almost always get that double crash gem. It's super powerful. Combines, as I mentioned, very important. Buy one in the first five turns. Oh, almost always. That's a good rule of thumb. As you get better at the game, there may be situations where you don't want to do that, but I'd say turn three, four, maybe five, always have at least one combine purchased. By the time you get to 10, purchase another one. That's just a real rule of thumb. Uh, it'll probably do serve you well to get started. Any other major tips here that I can think of? Um, examine the bank. Compare it to your character. What synergizes well? For example, DeGray has a, one of his character chips has a red act arrow, which means if you buy red actions, you'll be in a good position to take advantage of that synergy. Uh, one of the characters has a load of brown arrows in her at Setsuki. She has a lot of brown arrows. She's like a very combo heavy character with brown char uh, char uh, puzzle chips. So she would buy a lot of brown puzzle chips. Uh, and uh, if you don't have any special arrows, then you can kind of go with anything that you want. Uh, one of those characters, for example, is Midori. The dragon guy doesn't really have any arrows on any of his chips. They're all enders. But for him, that means that buying forks are really, really beneficial. And there are a lot of different types of forks. Uh, so that is Puzzle Strike. I hope that gives you a really good feel of how the game plays. You can play it for free on the, on the Serlin Games website here. And uh, let's show you what the, the whole game looks like. Let's back out a little bit here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. And I can show you how their, their, their free-to-play model works. It's actually quite good, if you ask me. Um, doo -doo. There it is. Shoop. Let's take a look at this. You've got... Uh, back to Lobby. Now, you have 20 of these... I have 20 of these tokens. You start every day, you get 10 new tokens. And those tokens let you play any character that you want. So right now, there's only one character who doesn't cost tokens, because he's the free character for this week. Every week, a brand new character becomes free, and you can play them all week as many times as you want, no exceptions. But if you wanted to play one of these other characters, if you wanted to play your favorite character, you either have to spend tokens or gold. Like I said, you get 10 free tokens every day. Your first win of the day, you get 10 tokens. And sometimes, in a match, you'll get what's called a critical hit. We had that happen in that particular match, uh, and you can get 10 free tokens that way. So tokens uh, go away at the end of the day, and then you get refresh, always reset back to 10 at the end of every day. However, you can also purchase gold. And gold is purchased in the store, um, which allows you, for example, for $8, you can play 80 games. So that's a dollar 
per 10 games. That's 10 cents a game. That's not unreasonable. For $20, you can play 250 games. That's even less than 10 cents a game. That's pretty good. And if you want to get $40 and basically never pay for this game again, I don't think I would ever play 600 games in the next year or so. But, you know, it's it's possible because you can also play Yomi or um, the other game that's on there that I can't remember now. You can also subscribe. $9 a month lets you play unlimited games. So if you're stuck somewhere and you really like these games, Flash Duel, sorry, uh, lost my head there for a moment. If you really like these games and you enjoy playing them, uh, maybe a subscription is in order. As you can see, there's a bunch of games being played here and we've got the tournament coming up. So if you would like to play in that, sign up down. Uh, there's a link in the bottom of the video here. And if you want to watch the coverage of it, you can watch the coverage at uh, the twitch.tv slash bridger15. You can also watch it on this YouTube channel. And you can um, watch it after the fact. We'll also have it up on the YouTube channel here. You should be able to see a link for it coming up on your screen right now. So with that having been said, I, I highly suggest you guys check this game out. Like I said, it's free. Every day you get to try out a new character for free. If you want to play, it's real cheap. It's 10 cents or less a game just to play with the character that you like, and sometimes it's free. So, can't go wrong with that. Have a good, not, have a good one, guys, uh, and I am Bridger, signing off. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you'd like to show some support, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. A couple more videos for you to check out here, or subscribe to the channel, Sound Strategy Network. Also check out Team Legacy at teamlegacy.net, and our Twitch page at twitch.tv slash team slash teamlegacy.